welcome, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to this session of the of the, of the early Finnish morning. Uh, I'm going to to introduce the, the, the these talks. The talks is about is done by Evan Osei. This is a senior software engineering at Grab. I remind to you that if you have question for uh, during the talk, don't wait at the end of the talk, and uh, also make your question during the talk at the pad that you can find on the program webpage. And the talk uh, like, uh, that was carried by Evan, Evan will be focused on the use of uh, algorithm of to identify some some map uh, problem and issue uh, that are related to the routing. Hi, I am Ivan. I am currently working as a software engineer at Grab. Today, I am going to talk about how we identify map problems in OSM by connectivity check. Grab has been relying on OpenStreetMap for various things like improving ET accuracy, calculating electronic road pricing, etc. We are also enriching OSM and the community by adding and updating roads, collaborating with contributors like OpenStreetCam and Mapillary for street level imagery, organizing Mapathon like events, and all of this in a large scale across Southeast Asia. And in this process, sometimes we encounter certain problems and opportunities to improve OSM. Routing failure in OSM is one of those problems we see at times. Ideally, we expect OSM to completely reflect real world map. And as in real world, we should be able to find a route between any two places in OSM. In other words, each place should be reachable from any other place on the map. But unfortunately, that's not always true. OSM is not quite reflecting the real world map yet. This sometimes results in incorrect route and even no route at all at some cases. Meaning there is no way to get from, for example, place A to place B. This can cause fallback to other options depending on the use cases. For example, if we want estimated time of travel from place A to place B, straight line distance might be used in case of a failure to find a route. We notice these problems from different places. Two of the major sources indicating these issues are tracking related business metrics and regular monitoring by our operations team. So why do these problems exist? Actually, there could be several reasons behind, like human error. And in this case, most common one is probably putting wrong direction of travel by mistake. Poor, outdated or no satellite images in some cases. And of course, even though OSM community is large, it's finite. There is so much we can update with manual effort only. Let's look at some examples to better understand these cases. Here is an example of a human error. One of these directions has to be wrong. We call this scenario wrong direction of travel error. This one is little more tricky. It's not really obvious from the satellite image if there are roads connecting these existing road segments or not. Of course, it's okay to have incomplete map where we need further verification, but how do we know that this part perhaps needs verification later? We want to bring all these latent problems to the front. Looking at the problems and probable root causes, we have come up with a couple of goals. First, we want to automatically identify why some places are not reachable from others. Then we need to find a way for our operations team to take a look and fix those problems. Here is a visual of the end goal. We want to bring the red circular area to our attention and fix it. If it doesn't make sense at this moment, don't worry. This picture will come at a later point again and hopefully then we can easily relate to this. Now our biggest challenge is how do we find these problems? 
Enumerating all possible pair of places and checking if they are routable or not is not an option. That will take forever. We need a deterministic solution which is reasonably fast as well. As a result, we have come up with this hypothesis. As routing failures are rare, we know that majority of the places are routable from each other. If we can group these routable places together and visualize on the map, we should be able to see where the remaining parts are disconnected. Let's look at the picture on the right to better understand this claim. The pink section in the image is the routable group, meaning any two places in pink are reachable from one another. And the green section is not reachable from any pink section or vice versa. As you can see, some island-like places in green are not routable from pink section, which is not surprising. But there are some other green places which seem suspicious. So the goal is to have this view, investigate and fix those suspicious places rather than exhaustively looking at all possible routes. Before diving deeper into how we have developed this process, it's important to get familiar with some terminologies which are required to have clear understanding of our methods. Starting with directed graph, a directed graph is a set of nodes that are connected together where all edges are directed from one vertex to another. Here on the right side, we have an example of a directed graph. Next is strongly connected component or SCC in short. A directed graph is strongly connected if there is path between any pairs of vertices. The parts which are strongly connected are called strongly connected components. In other words, in a strongly connected component, any node is reachable from any other node following the directions. In the example, nodes B, C, D, E form a strongly connected component. Now that we know all the terminologies, we can simplify our hypothesis like this. We want to find the largest SSC in the map and figure out why other parts are disconnected from it. Referring back to the image, pink section denotes the largest SCC. Now let's talk about how to find SCCs. There are several ways to find SCCs. Two of the most popular ones are Kosorajus algorithm and Tarjan's algorithm. Both of these algorithms have similar time and space complexity, which is linear. We chose the first one because of its ease of implementation. It's worth mentioning that a naive algorithm could take forever to run SCCs among millions of nodes. So let's take a brief look at how Kosarajus algorithm works. There are three major steps in the algorithm. We will use this example to illustrate the whole process. First step is to perform depth first search from each node and push the nodes found along the way into a stack in topological order. We start performing depth first search from node A, mark it yellow to denote that this node is still in process. Then we move to the neighboring node B and start processing it. And like that, we keep visiting unprocessed neighbors in a depth first manner. Once we reach node F, we can't visit any other node from here. That means we are done processing F. So we mark it in green and push it into the stack. Now coming back to the previous step, we continue to process neighbors of C and keep pushing the nodes into the stack when they are done processing. Following the process animated in the example, our final stack is F, G, E, D, C, B, A. Note that we had processed A at the very end, so A is at top of our stack. Next step is to transpose the graph. In other words, reverse the direction of all the edges. The last step 
is to pop an unprocess node from the stack and visit all the nodes reachable from this node. Again, we can visit the nodes in depth first manner. Looking at our stack, first node is A, which is not processed for this step yet. We take it out and our stack becomes FG ED CB. As we can't go to any other node from A, we have our first SSC. Note that SSA can be made of only one node as well. Next, we have B at top of our stack. So we start visiting nodes starting at B. This time, we can visit E, D and C. So we have our second strongly connected component comprising of B, C, D and E. As we have processed all of these four nodes, we take this out of the stack. Next, we process the remaining nodes, G and F similarly, and our stack becomes empty. All of these four different colors denote four different SSCs, B, C, D, E being the largest. Now that we know how to find SSCs, time to work on visualization. GPS exchange format, GPX in short, is an XML schema designed as a common GPS data format for software applications. We have chosen to represent the data in this format as it's well known and works seamlessly with JOSM. Putting everything together, the workflow looks like this. First, we find the largest SSC in a map. Then we separate the largest SSC and the rest of the graph. Then create GPX files for both of the graphs. Finally, visualize everything in JOSM. Let's take a look at how it looks like at the end for a portion of the map. This is how it looks like once we load both the GPX files for the map. At this point, it's not making much sense, is it? Let's put a different color for the largest SSC. It's easy to do that in JOSM. The largest SSC is in blue color. If you remember the hypothesis we had about largest SSC covering most of the places is held true. Now let's zoom into one of the pink section on the right image to see why it got separated from the largest SSC. Let's take a closer look on the image on the right and also we are overlaying the GPX files on top of OSM standard black and white map to better understand the reasons. Taking a closer look, we see two likely reasons for this section to be disconnected from the largest SSC. Both 1 and 2 have two dead ends where they are very likely to be connected in real world. These disconnections mean that we can't have any routes in OSM going through either of these two ends. Taking a closer look, we can see that both the roads have two lanes of opposite directions. But as the probable U-turns are missing, these two lanes are disconnected. These problems could have been remained undiscovered for indefinite time and we would have probably been suggested some other route or no route at all when requested in this area. Now that we see the problem, we can take necessary steps to fix this in OSM. If you remember these examples from the earlier slides, these were also surfaced using the same process I just explained. Throughout the process, we have observed few key points. More than 90% of the nodes are usually part of the largest SSC. That means more than 90% of the places are reachable from one another. Many of the disconnection happen due to parking lots or private properties, which means that there are roads ending at and beginning from those places without any interconnection between themselves. This causes disconnection in the graph. There are more wrong direction of travel cases in OSM than we had anticipated. 
Although this system is helping us making OSM better every day, there are still ways to improve. The system can be much more effective by removing some obvious flags like parking lots or private properties, etc. By definition of SSC, we can say that more nodes in the largest SSC likely refers to better map, as that means more places are reachable from one another. Assessing map quality automatically by comparing SSCs in different version can help us keeping the quality high. That is all from my side for this talk. If you have any questions regarding this talk, please reach out to me at ivan.hosain at grab.com. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, one. Thank you very much, uh, Ivan, for your talk. So we are here for the question. I cannot see you, so if you would like to to yeah. unmute and to show yourself. Okay, perfect. So we have some, thank you for the, the, the quest that the talk was very, very technical. So we have some really technical question. Uh, I have just one curiosity just for you. Uh, this tool is, 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 is not uh, published, it's just uh, used for, for, by you because it's too much uh, computer expensive, because it's uh, too much, uh, it's not, it's in a, in a developing phase. Uh, by the tool, do you mean the algorithm? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's not that um, like resource consuming. Okay. So yeah, it, it's just linear in complexity. So I think it's as simple as it can get. Okay. Okay. There is a similar question that we can see. There is a, there is any open source code we can we have uh, we can adapt to in other country. So the reply is that it's too much computing. Request. Yeah, so if you remember, uh, it's a good question. So the algorithm we used, the main algorithm, SSC, to find the components, it's uh, quite available everywhere. And yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, it's easily available. It's not something that we have developed, but the process is what I'm trying to um, convey here. OK. We have a technical question. Uh, by Kirill. Uh, why do you need a check in the direct graph? In my, he, part, he, he make the example of his validator. In my validator, I mean, I've implemented connectivity check using non-direct graph, just ignoring one-way tag. The, the algorithm to, uh, to find Iceland becomes mu much more simple, but the results are practically the same. Do we have test these aspects? Do you decide to don't? Um. I'm not sure if I get the question correctly. So okay. we can ask to, to the user to make uh, make it more clear, maybe because uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so if you I need more clarification, can can make it more clear. Since we can make it more easy, uh, there is more another one. Can you explain the wrong direction? Both ways seems connected by the same node. I think it's a rephrase to the to the slide with the two highways. Yeah. So if you remember, so there's a single node and we have a direction from both directions and both are like one way roads. So one of them has to be wrong direction. So it's supposed to be like the one of the direction has to be correct and another one should just follow. So otherwise there would be a collision in that single point of node. Okay. So that was what I meant by wrong direction of travel. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, do wrong direction, opposite direction cause disconnectivity to capture by the algorithm? Uh, sorry, which question is it? I can't it's find the it. Four, the four one. Okay. Do wrong direction cause this con this, uh, cause disconnectivity? And yeah, of course. By the current, the, okay. Yeah. So and that's, this, uh, even uh, if you remember the example I showed in the slide, that uh, we also found that throughout the algorithm only. Okay, I just okay, I have a, I'm just having to load reload my pad because there is some problem. Okay, uh, are you con con concentrating only on the car routing, or you think about other users? So this algorithm actually works on graph. So 
it doesn't matter which graph you present it can be car working or anything it doesn't matter it can work okay. on all kind of graphs okay so we have uh, there is a i don't know if it's a request or a or a question i think more is a request you can contribute all these to the idea editors checkers maybe it can be a suggestion or also you can share uh, the your work that can be easy implemented since yeah i think most of the things are already available publicly uh, it's just putting the things together and i would say it's a big effort to put things together it's not just simple the, right. the result at the end is very simple but the process to arrive <laughs> to the result is generally very complex right uh, i'd say i don't have any immediate plan but uh, i can take it to the relevant teams who handles these things for grab okay uh, okay we reply most of them there is just some comments that say that we we have it's really hard generally to to have uh, to, to a map a road in area where, the, where there are a lot of trees that maybe user does, does not really believe that the, the, the road goes to the direction that is expected. Maybe there is some changes, so they, they prefer don't to, 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 to check. I just, I just think in one case that I affronted, if you are thinking, if uh, the, there, are the, there are the possibility that the, the algorithm identify small island, for example, if you are going to map uh, routes in a small island, like I have an example for a project in the Commerce Island in the near Madagascar, and there is like a very small area and I try some checker and most of them say that all these roads are separated from the main graph, but the issue is that the roads are very few. So there is something that check, like your idea of having a block, say that identify that if there are some other road near or is just an isolated block of roads. Yeah, for now it's just the isolated block of roads. And the idea is to make the visualization easy so we kind of know where the roads are getting disconnected yeah okay. but it's not automated yet okay we have uh, uh we have some correction in the in the first question uh why do you need a, a check in the direct graph uh, i in, in my validator i've implemented a connectivity check using no direct graph just ignoring the one-way tag the algorithm find island, island isolated subgraph. So what we're not talking because there are there are much my, uh, becomes much 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 simple, but the results are particularly the same. Uh, you don't really need to analyze the oriented graph; just analyze the connectivity. I think that the question is the aspect is asking why do you need to analyze the direction of the single arc and not just the presence of the arc between the nodes. Right, right. So going back to the wrong direction of travel case. So if we ignored the direction part, we would have not got the case where two unidirectional roads are colliding. Yeah. So I guess that kind so, of explains why we choose to have directional graph. Okay. Yes, this exactly can be the if you depends on the on your proposal. So if you'd like us to identify this aspect, it's not yeah. possible to you to identify this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there was just a suggestion to map uh, uh, streets that are isolated, uh, street when we don't have trees to use LiDAR data. Yes, this can be definitely used. We need this LiDAR data to be to be present. Okay, okay. This can, there is another question. Profiles matters, in my opinion, for pedestrian era slash plaza with bicycle access, uh, with a special case of route for routing. Do you think that it can be can be a change of the approach Passing from the from the from the highway to from just the car to these other aspects that can be also related to the other acts to the to the next question that is related to the uh, to the COVID. That is the how we can use the reverse algorithm for COVID make a more social distances. <laughs> Sounds like an interesting question. Um, let me see if there is a quick answer I can think of. I can just port, make an example in that I found uh, there is a very diffuse example starting from an example of New York where the some public data, open data, not directly from OpenStreetMap, but they are used for compute the the width of the sidewalk and uh, to, to to measure the 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 so if the social distancing is possible in most of the cities. The first one was New York that I know that was done by an Italian user in most of all the city in Italy and. Uh, in different others part of the world for sure for, for using this open code but these these data are very generally messy 
the one that also I tested. So it can be effectively useful to find some, some algorithm that can process this and improve this data. But as you say, the, the algorithm can be used on every graph, doesn't depend really on the, which is the, the, exactly. the, the, the scope. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have all for the question. If you have more uh, detailed question, more technical question that you think that was, we don't have enough time to do it, you are free to, to ask uh, to, to even in private. He leave the mail at the end of the presentation or you can reach it in the, the search that he leave in the pad. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, Ivan, for your uh, presentation. See you, in, next, you. in the next session. Thanks. Bye.